I'm going yellow today. You're gonna be a yellow guy? I'm gonna go, go yellow, yeah. I had, I, you know, what I'm is the yellow? Ripple? It's like a it's tropical Rico? one. It's tropical. It's like pineapple. Oh, it's hot it's from the thought tub today. Get rid of the uh, dildo of destiny. Yeah, bye bye, dildo of destiny. Wow. I oh, know. I've already adapted. I have not quite adapted to the temperatures yet. Oh, I gotta sink the body all the way in. Okay, wow. We have upgraded the thought tub. <laughs> Look at the beading on this thing. Oh, it looks good. It does look good. Nice cold one. Cheers. Welcome to the thought tub. We got the background all set up now, which is nice. Blocks on the light up. It smells good. You like the smell of that? Mm hmm It's good stuff. Thank our friends over at Rebel for hooking that. That's a little product placement. There we go. So... Today, what's the topic of discussion? I'm gonna let you take the reins on today. Me, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> You're <a> my <mind>, man. <laughs> we both came and sat in the thought tub with no thoughts to be occupied. I was meditating this morning, so I got rid of all my thoughts. Well, now I'm sure it's gonna be easier to get a good one because your mind's clear and ready to jump. To jump where? <laughs> jump on in. Let's talk about mental, the mental aspect of freestyle skiing. You've wow, that was a good uh, that's a good turnover. Okay, yeah, see, because you you changed uh, freestyle this year. skiing or all sports. No, well, let's all sports is extremely important, but we are skiers, so I say that's our area. I'm a Meta Knight. Yeah, by all means, let's dive into it. I think because I mean, last last year we were talking a lot about mental preparation and being ready on top of things for when you your time time to compete. And, you know how that helps with consistency because that's huge. Pretty well, all sports like racing, like any sort of racing, motocross, cars, freestyle skiing. If you're consistent, you're gonna do well. That's who wins. You may not win every time, but you're gonna be at the top every time, in the top contention. Let's say you win. You think the consistency is how you huge. win? Huge. It's huge. It's huge, but you have to have the good, big enough tricks to win. I mean, it's not quite the same. It, it matters in Crystal Globe, like for World Cups, because you know if you want the Crystal Globe, you got to be. The it best. matters for Norams too. Exactly, but when you reach above that, like X Games, Dew Tour, stuff like that. Well, what Dew Matt Tour used to do like multiple stops, and there was a Dew Cup champion, I believe. There was. There is no longer a Dew Cup champion. Um, what do you mean, though, in terms of mental, mental for the sports? Are you talking about just like, just like making sure you always learn to run? Are you talking about preparing to do a new trick you haven't, or a little bit of both? I mean, every single part of skiing has a mental aspect to it. Now, I'm talking in particular right now with competition, but yes, it comes to learning new stuff, there's definitely a mental state you got to be in. you got to be energized enough where you know, you're not thinking about other things, you know what you're doing, but you don't want to be too over the top. You want to be a nice, uh, You can't relaxed. be too over the top. You want to be too relaxed, you want to be too energized. You want to have a nice balance where you're not overthinking it, you're not stressing, you know what you have to do. you got a good state, you got to do it. Do it. Yeah. Whatever. You know? But... Training has different mental as requirements than com like competing does. Yes, but I think the biggest yeah. So I'm twitchy as fuck. So I think the biggest thing, twitchy as hell. Mm. So I think the biggest thing that uh, <laughs> that I had to do this like personally this year is like I kind of came up with a routine just to get myself in the right mindset and stuff to drop in for a soap style run. Uh, to to land it like this year I think I I messed up. A singular slope style run the entire year so or like an ent one event the entire year like there was one event the entire year I didn't land a run is the weather was really bad in a case the jump um, the weight disadvantage yeah the weight disadvantage of being 123 pounds does not work well when there's an uphill wind and it is very slushy anyways uh, I think what I did this year is I did a lot of just being in the present moment and like getting in the present moment before I drop in but a lot of that stuff came from um, from doing it over and over again, like, at training. Though. Like, when I was at Mount St. Louis at night just skiing, I would sit there and, like, probably for, like, an hour to two hours, sometimes the entire night each day that I was working there, which is six, five, six days a week, I would pretend to do a comp run. Not I'd pick a comp run through the course or through the even if through Mount St. Louis. Even if you're just doing, like, a cork seven. Yeah, it was nothing hard. Five. It was, like, cork seven but to switch five. You, it's the linking. It's the, it's, yeah, exactly. And just being in the present moment and, like, being ready to, like, do your run, but also a lot of it comes with the confidence. Cause I used to be like, um, like even the year before, but the years before that, when I competed in slope style, I would have, uh, like at the top of the run, you'd be like, you'd have this doubt in your head, like, what if you don't land it, right? Yeah. Or like what I used to do is 
before I fixed it was I'd always be thinking too far down the line. Like, I'd be coming to do a two press two, and I'd be thinking about what am I going to do on the last row. Or I'd be doing a cork nine blunt, and I'd be like, oh, I got to do a, like a switch ten. Like, I was never thinking about what I was doing. Yeah, you really got to be That changed, and that's what really helped me a lot. But, like, you know, like, even though you can do right cork nine blunt or left cork nine really well. Yeah, I think... You still got to think about what you're doing when you're doing it. Yeah. Well, you kind of want to let go a little bit, but... Yeah, but, I mean, like, you don't want to be trying to take off to do a left cork. When you're thinking about doing, I guess, switch four on a rail. Like, you don't want to... No. No, one feature at a time. Yeah. But one of the big things, too, is having that confidence built up uh, that you are very, like... Even just, like, writing it down, like, I'm going to land this run is going to help you, like, when you when you go and things get, like... You're, like, almost falling off a rail and instead of giving up and, like, falling off it earlier, you're really going to fight harder to get that lock in the rail. Yeah. But the confidence, like, when you can stand at the top of the course and say... And like in your mind, there's no doubt that you're gonna land this run, and you're in the present moment. That's when you land most of the runs. And I think one of the big things that helped me with uh, getting that confidence and stuff is like making sure I didn't cheat myself. Like not go to the gym one day a week nope. like when I'm supposed to. Making sure like if I told myself I was gonna go on a run that morning, making sure I went on a run that morning. Yeah. I and don't... if and like one of the th- other things is like ice baths and stuff like that. Like being able to push yourself mentally just to know that you've yeah. done that. Instead of being in a thought tub, put yourself in a cold tub, then in a thought tub, then in a cold tub. Make sure you end on the cold tub. Yeah, I think you're supposed to end in a cold tub. But uh, one thing that I, I have to fix, though, is I got in, the, like, uh, in a routine of, like, this is my comp routine, that you don't want to do that because if something goes wrong, you don't want to be like, oh, I didn't get to do my full routine or I didn't prep properly, so yeah. I can't compete. You have to People be, who get all superstitious about, you know... You can't be superstitious this, because... that, whatever you do. No, no matter... Ball. Yeah, you have to put it in your mind that no matter what, I'm going to compete and I'm going to do my... I'm going to land this run, no matter yeah, yeah. what. No matter what happens. Ideally, you'd go doing those things, obviously... I don't want to say not to, because it does... Some people like to do that, because it... If, if, if Rituals you're, if are you're stupid. Not, y- yes and no, because what the benefit to them are for some people is it gets them in that mental state. So it doesn't have a superstition to it or anything, but some people, you know, they, they hit their hands three times and that just, that but triggers But what happens if they can't do that? Then they can't compete. Well, that's why you so don't want some elaborate, like, hokey pokey dance at the top. You know, it's just something small, like you tap your poles with your skis or something, or you clap your hands. Or just well, if something, your poles break and you don't have any poles, then you're fine. You, you hit your hands here. Just something that triggers your mind to start, like, I, I think you to just the have same to, song. I like, think, what if your music dies? And then you, you still do, yeah, but like, you have to be my point is sometimes that helps people. It does help. I but the problem is you have to be prepared. Yeah, that's to not keep, at all You have to I'm keep telling yourself that you're... Or you have to be at least, like, in your mind that no matter what happens, you're going to go out and you're going to land this wrong. Yeah, I'm that not Even if you that. aren't able to do the stuff, you, you can't That's do what that. I mean about the superstition. I'm just saying if you get the chance to do it, it does help some people. I think superstition's for pussies. Mm, yes. <laughs> but I definitely have some of it, so I've been get, trying to get rid of it. But I definitely think it's for people who have... Uh, I just wanted to say that I think... A lot of times we talked about what kind of training you got to do. And what. I think a lot of times people assume that they're different. Like your physical training and your mental training go hand in hand. Like they're directly linked. If you're oh. just training physical and mental not training. Mental training is more p- equally as important as your physical mm-hmm. training. I think one of the big things I did this year too that I found helpful a lot is visualization. Yeah. And like visualizing your run or even just visualizing yourself like at the bottom of the run. Like... Like watching yourself if just, you're really good at visualization you it's can hard to get good at visualization yeah but if you can visualize yeah. from a third person point of view then you're but like after a con after like a training day a contest I would go visualize my run like 10-15 times easily a night if not twice as much and all those tricks like like uh, they work really well I also found little things in my run like that I would look like uh, I would be hitting this like the slope course like there's rails here and then you turn a little bit to the left and there's jumps I'd be riding switch and then i turn and i look over my other shoulder and I visualized doing that. Yeah. And when I did it in my comp run, it would bring me back into the present moment more. Yeah. For the next feature. Things like um, that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Things that's like that. Trigger. That's what I meant about a trigger. Like, doesn't have to be some. But visualization, I think, is is definitely huge. But if you can do it right, I yeah. It's hard to get like, like me visualizing sometimes. Like, I'll try to visualize myself doing a two pretz two, and I'll visualize me twoing onto the rail, and like, I won't feel locked in. I'll feel like I'm falling off early in my mind. Yeah, and like having to fight that in your mind to like actually f- like turn yeah. on and, and like think that you're gonna be locked in is really hard to do. For sure, like I remember I could visualize a dub ten mute, and I could hear the pop off the jump and the snap of the skis and your skis banging together when you go for the mute grab. But then sometimes I'd roll it to fourteen instead of rolling it to ten, and it's like you gotta fight that. You gotta like slow it down in your head and visualize that break where you pull through, something like that. Like I used to have to do that a lot, it helped a lot. But that was something I worked on in my head, which translated to not happening on snow, which was nice. 
to not rolling to 14? Yeah. Have you ever rolled to 14? Because yeah. I've definitely rolled to 14. Yeah, it's it is great. fun. It's a good time. Until your feet are up here and you're just on your ass. <laughs> well, the one time I rolled to 14, I landed in a very heavy back slap. Mm. I've seen Christian roll to 14. I've seen a couple people roll to 14. I've seen everyone roll to 14. Matt By Ball, accident. Oh, yeah. Jay Mal, all the guys with that. Anyway, so, yeah, I think I think the moral of the story here is don't slack on your mental training. Don't slack in your mental training. It's important. Today's episode of the Thought Tub. Keep her up. Yes. Um, with that being said, we'll come back with another episode of Thought Tub that isn't so sports based. <laughs> See you soon. See you soon. <laughs>